All right, let's do the tree shaking. So this is hot tip number six. Pikachu to you too. Pikachu to you too. Pikachu to you too. Wait, is my microphone working? Oh yeah, it is. Okay. Okay, so hot tip number one. I don't know if I'm gonna call these hot tips, but tip number one is you can get a Pokemon through curry hunting. Whoa, wait, hold on. Wait, we will we will use this. I <laughs> we attracted two back to back. Alright, well hello. Okay, well, uh so we just did a uh <laughs> with we just did pretty mediocre curry. We got another Pokemon, so you can see our two horses. That's that's two, three for Rotom, Grim Snarl four. Porygon 5, and then there's a Salamance somewhere here. The heck is my Salamance? <laughs> oh, there, there he is. Salamance 6. We just attracted an Indeedee through cooking. Um, so you can shiny hunt this way, or you can just mark hunt this way. Uh, we're going to call this Indeedee over here. She's so she's so thick. Um, she wants to join our camp. Indeedee wants to uh, be on your team. Would you like to add her? Yes. Indeedee has joined your team. Went into the Pokeball. So, now that Ndidi has joined our team, we can quit this. We can go into our Pokemon boxes. Here is the Ndidi right here. Check summary. It should have the curry mark because we got her through curry hunting. There it is, the curry mark. Ndidi the curry connoisseur. Um, found in Glimwood Tangle. And there you go. So that is one of our hot tips. You can attract Pokemon by making curry on any of the routes in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now, this does not work in the wild area. We are here in the Glimwood Forest. Uh, so any any area where you can directly control the camera, uh, it doesn't work. So Isle of Armor, Crown Tundra, and the Sword and Shield wild area, this would not work. But any of the routes in the caves, uh, you'll be able to curry hunt Pokemon or the marks, or if you are um, really bored, if you want to shiny hunt. All right, hot tip number two is you can actually move these icons around by pressing the Y button. It's not that exciting, but if you're here for it, I don't know. It's just people come into my stream, and I, I show them they can do this, and they're like, whoa, my mind is blown, and I'm like, yeah, check that out. Hot tip number three that you may or may not have known about is you can actually evolve a level 100 Pokemon in this game. So if you got Wonder Traded a level 100 Charmander, you can evolve it to a Charizard. If somebody traded you a level 100 uh, P Dove in Generation 5, and you were like, man, I wish this P Dove was an Unpheasant, said no one ever. You can evolve it. Okay, here we are trying the rare candy on a level 100 War Turtle. As you can see, it only lets us select one rare candy. Pokemon gained experience, and now War Turtle will go through the animation. So if you ever got Wonder Traded or Surprise trade, it Traded, or if you accidentally wasn't paying it you weren't paying attention and you let your Pokemon get to level 100 in sword and shield you can use a single rare candy to evolve your war turtle or any other Pokemon that evolves into Blastoise but there's your hot tip number three you can evolve a level 100 Pokemon I I've, I've tested this with other, other Pokemon it works fine you can use it on a Charmander Charmeleon Squirtle for example the only Pokemon it doesn't seem to work on is Inke. uh we couldn't I couldn't find a way to evolve a level 100 Inke because of its weird ability of holding the switch upside down but it has worked for other Pokemon and that is new to sword and shield Hot tip number four, you should always shiny hunt or explore the game with a Yamper in your party, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so we found the ever so rare and luxurious Cramorant. Let's say, for example, we want to use a great Pokeball for this great Pokemon. Let's say we're going to throw our sports ball. We only have one. They're pretty rare. In this case... If this Cramorant was shiny and we wanted a sports ball, this is a pretty risky throw. Because if this sports ball fails, we don't get it back. But this is the luxury of hunting with a with a Yamper. We're going to throw this sports ball. We're going to pretend this Cram is orange. It's going to shake. And boom, broken out. We lost our sports ball, but that's okay. Because Yamper's ability is ball fetch, which means it will get the sports ball back. Now, while we cannot use the sports ball again, the Yamper picked up the sports ball and it is now holding it as a held item. So, in this case, we can use a different ball, but or we can just get drill pecked because we're not allowed to run away. But now if we check the Yamper, our sports ball is safe and sound right here. So we can return it back to our inventory. 
And even though we didn't catch that Kramer and a sports ball, we did not waste the sports ball. This would work in any type of Pokeball, Beast Ball, Friend Ball, Love Ball. Um, I will say, though, I did test this with multiple Yampers. It only works with one Yamper in your party. So if you are shiny hunting and you find, like, a shiny Venipede and you want to use a Friend Ball on it and the first Friend Ball fails, at least you get the Friend Ball back and you can try the second Friend Ball, which, unfortunately, Yamper cannot recover. But um, you at least get the first ball back without having to worry by using said Yamper. So to clarify any questions on this, we're going to run into this Tangrowth. Not as not as exciting as the, the Cramorant, unfortunately. But Yamper does not have to be first in your party for this to work. The key thing is Yamper cannot be holding an item. So you can see we got our Sports Ball back from last time. But for this uh, Tangrowth, we're going to use our Safari Ball here. Now imagine a shiny Tangrowth and a Safari Ball. What a find. Oh, good. Okay, good. It broke out. Okay, so now the Safari Ball is gone. We wasted it. We had two very rare Safari Balls. We just wasted one. We have one left. But now Yamper is here to save the day. You can see Yamper has no held item. We're going to swap it into battle here. Now, it is helpful to have a Yamper at level 100 so it can survive. It needs to be alive to activate its ability. Tangrowth going to tickle us. And Ball Fetch is now activating. And Ball Fetch grabbed the Safari Ball back. So now if we run away... Don't know if Yamper outspeeds here. Um, we're just going to uh, use the old polka doll here. Now we can see the Yamper has the Safari Ball safe and sound. We're going to take it back off. And if we go into our inventory, we should have two. And we should still have the one sports ball. Good thing I didn't save. Let me double check here. Sports ball, yes. Safari Ball, two. Okay, perfect. Hot tip number five. Once you complete your Pokedex in Sword and Shield, you can go here where it says Current Recommendations. Even though I've already caught Throw, Ponyard, Pseudowoodo, and Hatena, uh, they are recommended today, and this changes every day. The reason that this is important, and the reason that this is a hot tip, is that it makes hunting these Pokemon easier, whether you are Mark hunting or Shiny hunting, because these Pokemon appear more frequently. So for example, if you wanted to hunt Maractus and Maractus was in the current recommendations, that would be a good day to dedicate towards your Maractus hunt, whether you are shiny hunting or mark hunting, because the Maractus would appear more frequently. Hot tip number six is about how to shake a tree. Multiple times people come into my Twitch chat and they're like, oh, I didn't know there was a pattern of shaking the tree. I'm going to show it here. Hopefully it works. So there are two different shakes. One is a fast shake, one is a slow shake. As long as it's slow, you can keep shaking. Let me show you. All right, well, this this is weird because the tree isn't shaking at all. <laughs> what? Is this broken? Why isn't the tree shaking? What happened? <laughs> what? Wait, what? I've never... <laughs> Why is it not shaking? <laughs> what is happening right now? <laughs> All right, so there are two levels of shake. This first shake that's happening right now is pretty slow. It's about one second in between. So as long as you get the slow shake, you are you are safe to shake again. So now we shake again, and we are still on the the slow shake. You're going to notice the difference between the two, and uh, Jake will put a side-by-side -side of the two shakes here. But we're going to shake again. We are safe. Um, we are still slow here. Shake again. Okay, now we have the fast shake. As you can see, it is much faster. Now, here's the, here's the pro tip. Here's the hot tip coming in. The fast shake, you are allowed to shake once on. So, because it just started fast shaking this turn, you get a free one more shake. And now you are done. So, you can take the risk of trying to go again, but you'll probably get that squavid encounter. So, at this point, you walk away. So, there is your hot tip. Always shake when it's slow. When you get that first fast shake, you get that one free shake, and then you are good to go. And you can do that to every tree in the wild area, and you can stock up on all the apricorns like I just did. Kachow. Wait, kachow. Hot tip number seven is teaching Pokemon moves they can learn an easier way. So if we go through the move list, we can see that Porygon 2 and Rotom can learn Ally Switch. We can see that none of these Pokemon can learn Air Slash. We can see that two of these Pokemon, Porygon and Spectre, can learn agility. There's a lot of TMs and a lot of TRs, and this can be tedious. So I'm going to show you how we can do this even easier. If we go to Held Item here, and we go to Open Your Bag, 
we can see exactly which moves Porygon 2 can and cannot learn. The red moves are grayed out, cannot learn it, but Porygon can learn Blizzard. Porygon can learn not a lot of these moves. Electro Web, Indoor. Um, so because I always mess this up, it is held item, open your bag, and then go to the TM slot. You can see exactly what moves your Pokemon can or cannot learn. All right, hot tip number eight will require you to have the DLC of Pokemon Sword and Shield, the Crown Tundra. You will want to fly to Challenge Beach and surf your way over to these spare islands. I will show you exactly where we're standing. Okay, there's, there's the Challenge Beach. Here we are on this island. You can tell it's the right island because there's this big, bad, ugly tree back here. But anyways, I call this Mint Island. Uh, on this island is uh, daily mints and items that you can collect. And every day at midnight, these items respawn. So sometimes you can get, uh, well, there's our first mint, Timid Mint. Sometimes you can get two to three mints on this island every, oh, we got another one. This is perfect for this YouTube video. We got the Sassy Mint. Uh, and you can go around in a circle. I can show you where all the items are. There are two over here. This is always going to be a twig. This is always going to be something random. There's usually a dive ball over here. This was not planned. Usually I only get one mint, but we got two mints so far. We have more chances for mints. Now, mints do appear throughout the Crown Tundra and the Isle of Armor, but here, like I said, this island really gives you quite a few mints every day. Dose of energy powder. We got one more chance. It should be right here. And we got three mints. Hey, not bad. So, yeah, you should check this island every day. It's uh, just fly to that water tower, surf over here to the ugly tree, and then walk around and collect these mints. All right, hot tip number nine involves us flying to Winden outside of the Rose Tower or the Battle Tower. Is it still called Rose Tower after you defeat the game? I'm not sure. Anyways, uh, when the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra DLC came out, they added this guy back here. Um, you don't need to purchase the DLC to see and talk to this guy, but this guy lets you have your older Pokemon participate in ranked battles and ranked tournaments. So if you import a Pokemon from Pokemon Go, uh, like this Porygon here, it will give uh, your Porygon or any other Pokemon you bring in from Diamond and Pearl, Black and White, Pokemon Go, Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. It will give any of your old Pokemon the ability to have the battle ready mark. The battle ready mark looks like this little, um, we'll have an arrow pointing to it. It's like this little uh, explosion symbol. Uh, so you can see that this is a shiny Porygon too that I caught in Pokemon Go. That's the big G. And then the little explosion symbol right there means it has the battle ready mark, which means it is able to be played in competitive. If you catch a Pokemon in Sword and Shield, like this Yamper, it will have the little Pokeball, uh, which means it doesn't need the battle ready mark because you caught it in Sword and Shield. All right, final hot tip is how to buy Premier Balls. Now, in past Pokemon games, you would have to buy exactly 10 Pokeballs to get one Premier Ball. We're going to do it right here. 10 Pokeballs. We will throw in a Premier Ball. But in this game, you can actually buy different amounts of Pokeballs. So, for example, we can buy 110 Pokeballs, and that should give us 11 Premier Balls. There we go. But even better is we can buy Ultra Balls or Great Balls or pretty much any type of Pokeball at these stores. If we buy 150 Ultra Balls, we should be getting 15 Premier Balls here. Boom! So in past games, you had to only buy 10 at a time. But in this game, you can stock up if you want to collect and hoard Premier Balls like me. If this YouTube video was helpful to you, please give it a like. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you had for breakfast. And I will see you all next time.